Tuesday morning uh, meeting of the House of Relations Committee. And we are starting off uh, right at 8.30 with the Agency of Agriculture. And first, we would like to welcome um, the Committee of Jurisdiction. We have the House uh, Agriculture Committee here. We are working uh, as a team because we need to uh, move through these budget pieces very quickly, but thoroughly and responsibly. And so we are doing these joint meetings. Uh, so for Carolyn, uh, for your committee, um, we, what we typically do in appropriations, we hear sections and then we stop for questions at those sections. And so um, appropriations members or ag members, please use your virtual hand. If you have a problem with that, just give me a, a signal like this and uh, we'll make sure that your questions are asked. We also have a, a couple of members here from uh, House Natural Resources because there are some water quality pieces within the Agency of Agriculture's budget. And I, um, it's important that all committees hear uh, the, the testimony that is, that is related to the work that they do. And um, so I am going to um, ask Peter, he has a quick question, Peter. Just comment, I'll, you've got me for another five minutes and then I have to go to corrections and institutions for BGS presentation. I'll probably see you on the floor. Thank you. And uh, we do have a floor session today. So we are scheduled with uh, agriculture through uh, 930, but we, we have a formal recess at 945. So we do have a little bit of room there. And I also have to jump off for a meeting at five of nine. And so uh, Mary, you're prepared to um, uh, go with this committee and chip conquest. This is your budget and so be sure um, uh, you're highlighting uh, all of the issues, but I'm going to stop there and uh, welcome House Agriculture. We, we like this partnership. It's working really well with other committees and we hope it works with you as well and Amy with at Natural Resources. Carolyn or Amy, do you have any comments you would like to make before I turn it over to the agency? Uh, thank you, Kitty. Uh, really glad to be here with you today and uh, you know, we really appreciate being invited to come. I think this makes a lot of sense to to save time as we move through this process. And uh, and our, I'll speaking for my committee, we really appreciate this opportunity. So thanks. Great, well, we're glad to have you, uh, Amy. I, same thing, ditto. Thanks for the um, heads up and inviting us and including us. And Representative Dolan is also here with us today. So thank you so much for having us. Good to and see I everyone. do apologize for your short notice, Amy. You 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 turned around very well. She she we I think I called her at five after eight and said there's water quality. So please join us. And so uh, welcome, Secretary Tebbets. It's nice to see you. If you would like to introduce your team and um, start <clears throat> and and if you could start with water quality, I don't know if you can shift gears. If you can't, I understand. Sure. But if you start with the water quality issues. Uh, because the uh, chair of natural resources was not prepared to be here and, and has uh, has other commitments. And um, so that would that would be helpful if you could do that. And we will stop in natural places to ask for questions. Uh, welcome, Secretary Tevitz. Well, good morning, all. We're all uh, pinching ourselves knowing that uh, today is actually uh, August 25th and not January 25th, but uh, welcome back. Uh, We've been extremely busy, as, as you have, have been over the last uh, few weeks since we last saw you uh, in, uh, in the middle of the summer. So um, why don't we, as uh, the chair requested, why don't we move right to uh, clean water adjustment. Um, joining us uh, also uh, on the team is uh, Deputy Eastman is with us today. Also, Diane Boffo and our financial director, Amy Mercier, is, is with us today as well. So. Um, let's go uh, to clean water. Um, and as you know, um, uh, we have had some uh, serious uh, budget issues. Uh, one of our biggest programs uh, at the Agency of Agriculture is uh, water and water quality, um, both with inspection, enforcement, and a number of uh, ranging programs that offer financial assistance to various partners, including our, our farmers who are implementing water quality uh, projects on the ground. So I think that probably the headline here is uh, we did have to trim uh, some of the work that, uh, uh, that we have to do in water quality. Um, and one of the adjustments uh, is a reduction, you'll see it on the line two, 
uh, some water quality grants of about $600,000. I think it's important that we have prioritized making sure the implementation uh, continues to happen on the farm. Uh, we believe those projects are important and can go forward of what we're trying to do. Uh, we're maintaining our core commitment, those, those foundation programs uh, that improve water quality. So those uh, remain in place, but we did have to trim some of our areas uh, with um, some of our granting programs and some of those granting programs uh, will not be uh, you know, fully funded as we go through. Um, they will be, they will receive some dollars. They're not getting, you know, um, a total cut. So we'll go through with that. Um, Diane and, and Allison, I'll, you can offer any more detail if you'd like, but I think the foundation of our water quality program remains intact, which is some of the granting programs uh, will not go forward, whether it be uh, through some of our partners that are working with us as well. So Diane, I'll let you add up um, any added comments if you'd like. Thank you, uh, Secretary Tibbetts, and, and thank you for having us on today at the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, yeah, $619,999 is the reduction in the clean water funds, and it will be on our water quality granting. Um, some of those won't be expanded as much as we had hoped. Uh, we'll still be doing work around rotational grazing and farm agronomic practices on farm work, but some of that will be scaled back. So nothing is really going to zero, but we're scaling back certain things. The support we have for UVM extension, the conservation districts, uh, the NRCC are all in place and fully funded. But those are the ones that are truly boots on the ground on the farm implementing those water quality fixes. So those will remain strong. We moved um, a couple of years ago to multi-year grants because it was very hard for these organizations to have one-offs one year at a time. How do they get staff? How do they keep staff if you can't show that this grant is going to continue through multiple years? And each year, of course, making sure they understood that you know, we expect this funding. If we don't get this funding, things may change. Uh, but we have a very strong program in place, especially UVM extension in the conservation districts and some of the watershed um, organizations to um, have this implementation at the farm level. So it will be a, a pinch, but it won't be a wholesale cut. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Diane. <coughs> Teresa, could we move back to the, the Hollywood Square view? Um, and then I just wanted to see if there were questions on this. It's about a $620,000 uh, reduction uh, of scaling back water quality programs um, to farmers. Um, are there questions from anyone on this? <clears throat> Seeing any questions? I'm going to ask a question. Amy? Amy? Well, I just would love an example. Uh, like, is it so you, it's a scaling back? Um, so does it, we were scaling up presumably, and so does this represent just a reduction in the number? And if you could give us an example of the types of projects that won't get funded? Um, so we, uh, if you go back to our original request, we were looking for $600,000 more in um, clean water fund granting programs. So it's about a, you know, uh, we didn't go up 600000 we went down um, 620000 So some of the things we had hoped to do was a greater expansion on rotational grazing training, um, some more innovative and different water quality fixes at the field level. Um, some of those will have less activity, not it won't go back to zero. So um, uh, for example, maybe we were hoping to scale the rotational grazing up to 50 farms and we'll be able to have enough money to do 25. So it's not, nothing is truly going back to zero, but being able to expand some of these programs will be curtailed. Okay, thank you. So, it's a, I'm not. <clears throat> so, this isn't. It's a six. It's it's a, it represents a reduction just from the original budget of in January, but not a reduction from the previous year. Yeah, I would have to go back and check those numbers to verify that. But I I believe, I believe that is the case. But I will need to verify those numbers. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. And just so that I'm clear, Diane, the, the reason for the reduction is the, the dollars coming in didn't perform as well as we had hoped is, I, I just, 
I just want to make sure that that's the reason why that our funding stream didn't perform as we had anticipated. Correct. The clean water fund across the board uh, funding was reduced. Um, so this is our portion of that overall reduction to the clean water fund revenues. Okay, Representative Helm. Thank you, Diane. Representative Helm. Thank you. So I, I wonder about this some. Um, I, I don't know, our farms now are down to some 700 figure or something in the state. Um, a pretty tremendous drop from five years ago, more 10 years ago, more 15 years ago. Um, so my point is, shouldn't, shouldn't our cost to agriculture for this de be decreased after at least a little bit of time? I expect this year you'll lose even more farms. And it comes a point in time you're addressing, yeah, beef cattle and that type of thing on the, on the graze land. However, the number of cows have to be getting, getting down. I mean, the number of properties affected by condensed cattle has to be decreasing. Am I incorrect about that? So Representative Helm, the, the change in farm number total, yes, we're uh, down around 650 active cow dairies. We're seeing an increase in goat dairies, which is fun. We're up to 46 versus 42-ish a year ago. And sheep is now six sheep uh, dairies. So a little shuffling around there. But the, the issue being of how the regulations have been implemented for water quality. Large farm operations began almost 15 years ago medium farms about 10 years ago. And in 2016, the certified small farms came in or 2017, pardon me. So the smallest group, which is the largest number is now being regulated in a means that they had not been before since 2017, three years. We're only three years in on these smallest farms. And the more we look, the more we go to it, um, inspect and we're on a seven year cycle for these farms. This is where the issues are and they haven't some have had delayed maintenance. Um, they're all stepping forward. Even in this time of very tight economics, uh, we have allocated all of that capital funds. We are ready, not obligated. We have, you know, people have to do all the paperwork, but we expect to expend that capital fund money uh, in another three months. So have it ready, have it obligated, people doing these projects. So these small farms are coming forward they want to stay in business. They want to be dairy farms. We have far, we have found and pointed out the water quality issues and they're trying to implement. So yes, there are fewer farms, but the largest number, so 33 large farm operations, a little over a hundred medium farms. And out of that 650, the rest are these small farms that we're just getting to and just doing those inspections and just finding these issues that need repair. So, so yes, the farm numbers are down, but we're now into the largest group of farmers remaining that n haven't had this scrutiny for water quality. So now we're in that mix and there's a lot of demand, um, a lot of demand to, to assist with these concerns. But I wanna make clear that this $620,000 cut isn't directly to farmers, it's to the organizations that assist them and we're being very cautious on our priorities of uh, those organizations, UVM Extension, Natural Resource Conservation Districts, the people who go to the farms and talk with them about how they can fix these issues that we've found on their farm. We help them too, but these outside groups sometimes are more, you know, the, I don't know, black hats, white hats, no, but regulatory versus non-regulatory. They can go on the farms. They can talk about the different fixes that can get you to the compliance that you need. Where they're saying you need to come into compliance, these organizations are the ones assisting. So we're really focusing the money onto those organizations that go to the farm, provide the assistance to the farmers, trimming those back a little bit that are providing assistance, but aren't specifically looking at um, water quality uh, compliance. They're, they're not compliance officers, but they're saying, oh, the agency told you and you need to fix the manure pit. Here are the options on how to fix it. 
So that kind of work being prioritized versus rotational grazing can help your farm too. It may not be a direct like, ooh, something nasty is getting toward surface water. So those are the ways we're trying to prioritize the remaining funds after this cut of 620,000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Diane. Um, we have uh, Representative Dolan and Representative Hooper, and then I want to uh, move on to the next budget because uh, we only have about a half an hour. Uh, we have about 40 minutes left, and I want to make sure we get to cover all budgets, and then we can go back and ask questions on anything as time allows. So, Representative Dolan. Thank you, and good morning. I appreciate this opportunity uh, to uh, participate. So thank you very much for that, uh, Chair, Chairwoman. My question refers to back to the annual report that, that you all put together uh, across state government that looks at phosphorus reductions and the goals that we need to achieve to meet our obligations over time and the performance that we've accomplished thus far. And I'm, I'm concerned that the cuts might affect our, our pollution reduction targets that have been so important and so much of a focus for the legislature over the past number of years. Can you speak to whether you anticipate these cuts having an impact on our pollution reduction targets for this particular sector? Representative Dolan, since the answer, I, I can speak to that. Uh, I believe uh, we are, um, headed in the right direction with this. As you indicated in that report, agriculture has done a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, our farmers have stepped forward, um, worked on um, a number of projects, and some of the data shows that agriculture is doing its, its, its work and it's, it's working through that. I think with these particular uh, reductions, it, it is not going to impact those projects that we really need attention quickly. Um, you know, some of those on-farm implementation conservation projects, those will go forward. As Diane mentioned, most of this um, uh, uh, reduction is uh, related to uh, technical assistance uh, that some of our partners give our farmers, which granted is very, very important, but we believe this uh, reduction out of these incredibly difficult budget times is probably the the best, and it keeps us it keeps us focused on our on our twenty year plan. Um, you know, we, we continue to do those infrastructure improvements, uh, conservation practices will go forward. So I, I think I think we'll stay on target, um, and uh, we'll just keep marching forward like our, our agriculture community has done. Uh, thank you, Secretary Tebbets. Um, Representative Hooper. Um, thank you. Two questions, please. What, the first is, would you remind me, us, of the source of the clean water funds? What are the revenue streams that go into it? And then my second, so let me ask that question, then I'll come to my second one. So, uh, Representative Hooper, the sources are the property transfer tax, a portion of the sales tax, and the... Uh, uh, bottle, bottle redemption, the Ashits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And my guess is bottles been okay, but sales and property transfer have been down. Uh, I guess yeah. property transfer has been only slightly off sales, yeah. rooms and sales has certainly yeah. been an issue. Bottles were off for a while when there was no ability to return them. COVID, there was a, a prohibition on that early on in COVID, but that has switched. Uh, change now, so th that has has uh, reverted. I think there was a spike potentially when redemption opened back up. Okay. Yeah, and then my question goes to the ex the decision about where the expenditures are. I can't tell from the little box that you've shown us. So you've indicated that it's a down in um, six hundred, uh, 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 roughly six hundred thousand for the grants. Where else are the downs in those programs and why the decision to do grants rather than other places within your control in that area? 
so the uh, these grants, as as mentioned before, the the original budget request was for almost six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars more, and to expand granting programs. So we're we're going in the opposite direction, backing off some of those expansions. So as as mentioned, grants is where we have probably the most flexibility trying not to take away money that's going direct to farmers for the implementation. So those partners who work with farmers is an area where with the multi-year grants, we can potentially adjust that, hoping that things will get better uh, in FY22, potentially, maybe, maybe not, but um, that we can adjust those multi-year grants with participants to you know, keep things moving, maybe at a little lower rate, um, but that is probably the area we have the most flexibility. I, I certainly see the nature of the similarity with the up and the down. I understood all of that. I was curious about your analysis and whether or not it made sense to look, and this is what I can't tell from, from here, is were there opportunities within the agency for reductions or reorganization or reordering so that you did not have to take them out of the grants? So beyond the, so the, the Clean Water Fund dollars uh, land in the water quality appropriation in the agency. Okay. So are you asking, okay. would we, would we adjust other appropriations in the agency to provide more money to the clean water appropriation? Is that what you're asking? Well, you've very politely pointed out what a silly question I just asked. I got, I've, I've got your point. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mary. And as far as um, the source of the clean water fund, we've heard a lot about property selling in Vermont and being very attractive. That's all new activity, and we heard from our state economists that that new activity has not yet been reflected. And so when uh, Diane mentioned that the property transfer tax was off a bit, it was prior to all of this new activity of sales. And so we have yet to learn if there is significant new activity or if it's normal, and, and so that will be more information coming. And the sheets, as, as bottles are able to be you know, returned and no longer stored, we may see a big bump there. And so depending on the activity in a couple of these areas and in the sales tax, um, there is a budget adjustment process. If we do see an uptick in the property transfer tax and more money comes in than was anticipated, and, and the sheets, if, if that has a huge bump in it, there is the budget adjustment process to make an adjustment here if it's, if it's available. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so I think now, uh, uh, Chip, you will follow up with any other questions and uh, for the Ag Committee, if you uh, get these questions to Chip so we all can stay on the same page uh, for water quality. And with this piece of the budget, uh, Carolyn, what we're asking is as the policy committees make a recommendation on certain sections, don't wait to send us everything. You can send it to us in pieces so that we can start checking off areas within budgets. And uh, we will look for your recommendations as you take further testimony and, um, and, and, and make a recommendation on all of these areas. Thanks, okay. Kitty. We were hoping to... Um have a, a meeting tomorrow morning. Our committee meets at 8.30. I'm not sure who our witnesses will be at this point, but uh, I will be glad to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, do it through Chip and through Teresa. Um, my emails are exploding, and so I wouldn't respond quick, quickly enough. And Amy, the same for you, the same message. As, as you make decisions, please let us know. So Secretary Tebbets, let's move on to the, the next budget. And Mary, I need to step out. Thank you very much. Well, um, why don't we uh, why don't we begin with just a, maybe an overview of what's been going on over the summer and how that's impacting uh, the budget uh, currently and, and going forward. So um, let's maybe begin in March and um, essentially uh, agriculture has been moving forward. Uh, we have not. We have not stopped moving with a number of our, our services to our community. That includes uh, meat inspection, um, dairy farms, land inspection, also the laboratory in Randolph has been up and running. 
all considered uh, essential employees. So they've been carrying out uh, the, um, the duties throughout the pandemic. Uh, as warm weather came and things loosened up a little bit, more of our, our staff uh, got out into the field, weights and measures, uh, water quality inspections, um, uh, and also animal health. Um, we had some issues with some animals coming from the Midwest uh, that needed attention, that needed some proper permits and so forth, so we've done that. Also farm, uh, whether it's feed testing, pesticide monitoring, uh, certification, that's all been going forward. As far as uh, staffing physically in the buildings at one in State Street, we've had about four to six people uh, here in the administration uh, working uh, here mainly in the business office and also in, in water quality from time to time. A lot of our folks uh, have been working from home. Uh, about a third of the staff um, has been working from home on a regular basis and, and that's worked well. Uh, it's been productive and I think uh, everyone is uh, you know, moving forward with that, and that will continue um, until we get January until we get next steps on that. So, Secretary uh, Tebbets? Yes. Um, we're, some of us are having a little bit of difficulty hearing you. I okay. maybe you could lean closer to okay, the mic. I'll try to do that. I, I am in the you. office. I was hoping that would be a little better. Is that better? Uh, yes. Okay, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to Project do that. out, not down. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank um, you. So um, some other things that have been happening uh, since you had your adjournment, uh, we've been uh, really focused on the granting programs. We have three granting programs uh, that are underway, uh, major, major uh, dollars that are being uh, put through the agency to the community based on the CARES Act. Uh, dairy producers, farmers, and processors, so there's a $25 million uh, program on the ground now that we're getting uh, money to producers uh, and also uh, on-farm uh, processing and so forth. The agriculture fairs, uh, the application closed last Thursday and over the next week that's a $500,000 appropriation uh, and that will be hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll be getting money back to the fairs because all of our fairs and our big events were, were canceled this year and there was tremendous losses uh, because of those. We also have uh, working lands and a number of our agriculture producers. There's an $8.5 million agreement uh, and uh, granting program that's underway. The applications are out and people are starting to apply for those. Those may uh, range from a maple producer, a sugar maker, it could be a farmer's market, uh, it could be a slaughterhouse, um, a vegetable producer, all those are in that $8.5 million program, so the application is out of that. And Mary, can I interrupt that, for a second? Sure. Yep, so please. Um, the water quality slides, at least the ones I saw, there was just the basically the one slide. There's another presentation that has a number of slides in it, and I wonder if we could have that up on the... I, maybe, uh, I don't have that. No? No. Yeah, we sent it in, I think, last year. It was the only one I had. All right, coming your way right now, Teresa. I think Diane's going to pop it up for us. Okay, thank you. We were trying to sort that out behind the scenes and we're confused. Um, so why don't we just stay here until um, Teresa gets that and can pop it up. Yeah, okay. So Secretary Tepitz, I, I think we can keep walking through your okay. presentation. And, and Diane, when you get to it, I'm on the uh, changes to the agency's budget slide. So um, here, here are some of the headlines uh, that you'll want to be focused on with that, with our proposal. So when we originally proposed the budget, we had a $750,000 one-time additional request for the Working Lands Program. Um, that has been withdrawn. The base is still there, but the one-time additional money of $750,000 uh, has been withdrawn. Also withdrawn was a uh, $25,000 request for an ear tag pilot program. Um, USDA is putting in some new regu regulations uh, related to uh, tracking more animals electronically. Uh, we have withdrawn that. We believe USDA has parked it for a bit, so we think we have some time to catch up on that. Uh, internal services, uh, fees, cost reduction, we've got about a $60,000 uh, reduction in that. 
And also uh, one thing that has been happening, and that's why I talked about the granting programs uh, considerably in the beginning is um, this is uh, something new for our agency. We, we don't do uh, this kind of money. It's about $40 million that's going through the Agency of Agriculture and uh, developing the application, making sure that it's in uh, compliance with the CARES Act funding and just the scope of the people that have been working on this uh, has been tremendous. Um, so what we have, what we're considering and what for your consideration is also is $1.5 million use of CARES Act funding because uh, we have people that are working on the CARES uh, program nonstop and this will help us offset some of the uh, general fund expenditures uh, across four of our six appropriations at the agencies. So these uh, folks are helping, um, you know, standing up these programs. They're also reviewing the applications, approving the applications, um, and the work that's going on behind the scenes leading up to this has been a tremendous. Uh, we will say it is uh, an estimate uh, of where we think we're headed on this, but I know that uh, Amy and Diane have really crunched the numbers on this, but we believe that just to get these uh, granting programs um, up and running and continue probably right up until at least um, January and beyond uh, is going to be about $1.5 million. Well, lost you, Secretary Tebbets, yeah. the last thing you said. Yeah, I was just going to highlight again that it's about $1.5 million of CARES funding uh, that is helping us stand up these programs, get the applications uh, developed, uh, get the reviews underway. We have employees that are doing work in this sector that normally it's not in their work plan just because of the scope of this. It's about $40 million worth of grant uh, funds that we need to get out the door in a very uh, quick fashion. So we have work plans where people um, that may be working in uh, uh, something that's unrelated to agriculture development, that they're working on this project so we can get these dollars out the door as quickly as possible. Uh, and um, it, there we go. Yeah, yeah. great. And Page. Um, I think you can go to the next one. Okay. And while we're moving there, we have two questions. Uh, Rep Yacovoni. Dave. Yes, thank you. Yeah. you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. There we go. Um, Secretary, thank you for all, all your work. Um, I just wanted to understand while you're standing up the processes for uh, administering the $40 million. Are you using the, the CARES Act dollars to hire new staff? Or are you using the CARES Act dollars to pay for your existing staff who are doing CARES work and therefore thereby saving general? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. We have not hired anyone uh, because of this. We're using existing staff. Uh, to work on this. And uh, Representative Yacovoni, it does allow a general fund offset, the use of the CARES Act money. And that is in our, uh, indicated in, in our, mm -hmm. our, our uh, crosswalk documents across. So um, th thank you. Where I was, uh, what I was wondering is if, um, so not only have you reduced the $750,000 for the working lands, you've also uh, are booking additional savings of, of roughly 1.5 million, I presume in general fund by using the CARES Act money. I was wondering if you had given consideration to um, using some of those savings to restore the working lands, but obviously your budget target uh, doesn't allow that, I presume. My, my, my understanding is probably that could not be used for, uh, CARES dollars could not be used uh, for that. Um, we do have, as long as the but money could is going- the save general fund dollars, uh, Secretary, could the general fund dollars that you're saving with the CARES Act be transferred to cover the working lands?
so with a representative at this point, the um, the funds, so the whole 1.5 million was not all um, backfilling general fund. Um, so it's about 408,000. Um, that was our general fund target reduction. Um, so we have been able to use the 1.5 million in CARES Act funds to offset uh, general funds in that manner to meet our required reduction. Um, we could not utilize all the 1.5 in CARES Act dollars for uh, general fund reductions. It had to be it had to be connected to the granting programs that were operating. Um, direct, basically, it's directly to staff time. Um, so um, we could not um, could not find more of general fund than that, just based on staff time. Um, the way staff are paid, some of them are split between um, general funds, special fund, federal funds, et cetera. So uh, that was the amount that we could um, offset with those CARES Act dollars. So there wasn't other funds available to backfill the uh, one-time requests for working lands. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then- Let me come back uh, with it, thank you. I, I appreciate that, Dave. Um, rep conquest. Um, so is the this one and a half million dollars um, an administrative percentage that came from the grant programs themselves um, to to administer the grants, or is that additional um, CRF money that you were that you got in order to pay for the time of, of running those programs? Um, it's the latter representative conquest additional funds. It does not come off the granting funds that are going out. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Chip. And I think we're ready to go back to you, Secretary Tebbets. Okay. And, and, excuse me, Dave, did you have another question? Yeah, it was just a hand issue, okay. Secretary Tebbets, this is this has been a little rough just getting this document up, and we'll we'll get there. Thank you. Sure. So I think um, I don't know how much detail you continue to want to if you want to walk through the the, the crosswalk overview. I think that's the next one, Diane. I think that's where we're at. Or who's running the driving it's the bus Teresa. here? Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Can you scroll down, Teresa? Thank you. So here's some of the detail I talked about, um, um, some of the things that we've withdrawn, the one-time money for the $750,000 working lands. Um, then we go to the ear tag program, we park that, um, some internal fees, cost reductions, and also we just had a discussion about the $1.5 million of the CARES Act funding to um, help with some of the work hitting this $40 million out, out the door. We can go to the next one. Yeah. And here's the, uh, um, here's some of the, the crosswalk and, and I don't know how much detail you want to get in this. I think, I think the, the two biggest headlines out of our budget are the um, using some of the CARES fund to help with the granting program. And we had the deep discussion about the water quality as well. And it, pretty much all the other programs um, have been level funded uh, and, and stayed intact. So we have not had to trim, you know, some of our granting programs, whether it be um, fares, um, et cetera, or two plus two, um, all those programs. Uh, we, we hope we can hold the line on those and not have any uh, major reductions in those programs. But I don't know, Madam Chair, how many, how much detail you want to, if you want to keep going through these and um, Diane, feel free to, um, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Blanks. Yeah, we, we certainly are familiar with the uh, across the board reductions in um, service fees. So we, we funds we don't need to discuss that. And I'm looking to hands to see if people are confused or have questions about some of the other reductions. It's I, I can't see the documents very well, but it, it, it sounds as if we have walked through everything you wanted. 
Yeah, I think the, 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 yeah. the major the major headlines that uh, we've talked about both water quality and also the CARES Act. Yeah. So, um, Teresa will be sending these documents to us so that we can look at them. It, it's always hard to do on the screen with pictures and hands. Um, so, maybe we can put this document down and go back to the full screen, Teresa, and have a conversation about this. Um, so, we I'm looking to the committees to see if they have any questions or need further clarification of what is being proposed here. Goodness. I, I, I am surprised. We are normally um, a little aggressive with our questioning. So I'm not seeing any questions. Um, and so Kitty, I will let you get back to work then, okay. um, Secretary Tebbets and other folks from your agency. Thank you very much. Um, I think Kitty described the process that we um, will be going through, uh, which is working this up pretty quickly. Um, the two committee chairs, it sounds like you may be having committee discussions and advising us as to your opinion on what ought to be happening there. Um, Kitty talked about how quickly we want to walk through this. Um, I, I, I'm so I think we've covered what we need to as a committee. Since we do have a bit more time here, I'm wondering if you would like to talk to us any more about the grant programs sure. and, and the, the use of the CRF money and maybe sure. the challenges you've had in getting those out the door, since that's, as you've noted, a huge. Yeah. Uh, amount of your work this summer. Yeah, um, that would be great. I, I can give you just a, a quick update on um, you know the three programs. Um, um, the five hundred thousand dollars for the fairs and field days. Uh, those applications are in. Uh, we're double checking the, the the figures and going back to the fair associations or the fairs if they, we need some additional information or any corrections that they might want to do. So that will be happening over the next. Uh, a couple of days. And so by the end of the week, we hope to be announcing, uh, you know, how much each fair uh, will get. Um, so uh, that will be uh, hopefully completed uh, by this week. Um, so we can begin the process of getting checks to those organizations. Uh, looking at the recovery Secretary, grants. Sorry, yes. Secretary Tebbets, I see a hand from Rep Partridge, Chair Partridge. Thanks, Mary. Um, I, I it was I, I I don't mean to interrupt your presentation, Anson. I just um, I'm wondering if that last set of slides has been sent to our committee. I've been communicating with Linda Lehman behind the scenes, but uh, I just want to make sure that last set of slides gets sent before our meeting tomorrow. Uh, I think that we're meeting with you, Anson, and Allison. And then I think maybe Diane's going to join us on Friday for our committee meeting. I just wanted to make sure that was going to happen. So we'll sorry make, to interrupt, but yeah, we'll make sure, we'll make sure we get those to you. Great, thanks Looks so like much. Diane's doing something right now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thanks, um, Mary. Yeah, yeah. Secretary Tebbets, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Back to you. Sure. So um, the other uh, portion of our, our recovery grants under the CARES Act is uh, the dairy section, which is. Uh, dairy farmers as well as dairy processors. Um, so as of um, yesterday, uh, 424 uh, people, organizations, farmers, processors had taken out and started the application. Uh, we have approved 101 and we have um, made $3.6 million dollars um, in um, dollars and grants have been approved and um, $2.9 million has already been uh, approved. Uh, we expect today maybe another $750,000 uh, will be approved and, and sent out as well. So we're getting up to, um, I think by midweek, we'll about $4 million of the $25 million um, has already gone out the door. 
Uh, the Agriculture Producers and Working Lands uh, program uh, began last week. Uh, people have begun uh, filling out the application uh, for that, and it's just beginning, and we've got $8.5 million in that. So uh, a few dozen people uh, have submitted applications, and this could be anywhere from uh, a maple sugar producer, a slaughterhouse, a hemp a farmer, uh, a farmer's market, all those uh, qualify for, for that uh, fund. So those will start going out the door in the coming week, coming weeks. Um, so those are the, the three uh, um, the three granting programs that we've been really, really focused on over the last uh, few weeks, standing them up. As you know, the state has a number of other, um, there's also a $5 million a program for uh, the forestry industry. And that one is not being managed by us. Um, but um, that one is also being kicked out by forestry and that's another $5 million program. So um, it's, it's, really, um, it's really great. We're continuing to do a lot of messaging and, and I would encourage all of you if you can help us with that. Uh, we do have some deadlines that are coming up uh, over the next few weeks where people need to um, you know, get their applications in. Um, you know, the CARES funding, we have to, we have to get this money um, out the door and on the ground uh, by mid-December because we do not want to return any of it uh, to the federal government. So um, we're continuing to message through our networks. Uh, we have a, a newsletter that goes out um, with about 4,000 uh, people subscribe to that. Uh, we've uh, flooded our social media channels, be it uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, we have listservs at the agency that we continue to uh, pick out um, information. We also, uh, through press releases, um, the governor um, has highlighted these programs and his messaging as well. So now is the time that uh, we're really uh, encouraging farmers, producers, all to work with us. We have some workshops over the next couple of weeks to help people um, with their applications. Uh, Farm Viability is helping us as well uh, to help anyone that's uh, could be struggling with the applications. Uh, so uh, right now, the push is just to get people, um, get their applications, get them approved, and hopefully we can get some money to them. Thank you, Secretary Tebbets. I see a hand from uh, Rep Conquest and then Rep uh, Partridge. Um, thank you. Uh, so I have two questions about um, Working Lands um, CRF funding. So we had passed a smaller um, round of CRF funding, um, I think maybe in the quarter one budget, and then later we did the large, with a larger CRF bill, um, we passed the, the larger uh, working lands funding. Um, did those two different programs stay separate? And, and if so, is the, did the first one, did all the money go out from that? So Representative Conquest, there was a million dollars um, allocated through um, H961 and 2.5 million allocated through H966. Is that the two that you're speaking of? So the first one, I thought it was less than, maybe it was, no, I guess it was a million. Yeah, so yeah, the, right. And yeah. so they, uh, because one was allocated to, uh, per, uh, to uh, ACCD, the 2.5 million was allocated to ACCD and the 1 million was allocated to the Agency of Agriculture. So due to CARES Act regulations, we have to, we have to report them and keep them separate by appropriation. But we have an, a memorandum of agreement with ACCD to manage the granting program as one for the working lands. Uh, but we have to track the dollars separately. So the application, you, the, the applicant will be seamless. They're, ap they're applying for working lands, but they won't know that it, the money's coming out of H966 versus H961. It'll be 3.5 million that's available. It'll be expended. We do have to track it by appropriation as, as dictated by statute or legislative intent. Okay. Um, uh, and so my other question, um, May you may or may not be able to answer uh, because I to me that ACCD took sort of took over administration of that uh, of that. Um, but my understanding is that 
Well, when we when we talked about the funding, the CRF funding for working lands in the in the big CRF bill, the second one, um, one of the things that um, had some real discussion in the Commerce Committee and some discussion, I, I think I remember in our committee was that um, we wanted them to be able to use the, the that money potentially for things that's were within the guidance, but weren't necessarily um, simply losses, revenue law or yeah, loss of, of uh, marketing or sales. Um, that that if people had needed to make changes to their operations in order to deal with the COVID um, situation, that money, uh, working lands money, might be available or would be available for that kind of thing. Um, my understanding is that. She that the, the program has um, really become just just uh, making up for losses, um, and so A is that true? Is my understanding accurate? And B, um, do you all know why that something that seemed to me to sort of not meet the intent is the way the program got rolled out? Um, well, the, we're just rolling out the um, non or the agriculture and working lands. So within that application, you yes can certainly um, claim a revenue loss, but we also have a whole section of other economic harm, and we give some prompts on that. Did you have to purchase personal protective equipment? You have to change your operation to accommodate the separation, the distancing, the, you know, for a slaughterhouse, we had people that had to put in plexiglass dividers. You could claim that because they could keep operating, but you had to, you had to separate people. Um, so those types of expenses are possible. Um, you had to change your business operation from sales at a restaurant to online sales. So you needed a new website, you needed uh, different packaging, you needed different um, shipping expenses, all those things are possible. And then we have at least five slots where no prompting at all, what else is out there that you wanna claim? Um, so I think we're very wide open of any type of other, other harm that we might not have thought of. We try to give some prompts, but Certainly, we have seen interesting things come in in the dairy application of, um, you know, husband wife teams operating the farm. One spouse is immune compromised, um, so they had to adjust how they work because of COVID and had to hire out to other labor because they couldn't get all the work done by protecting their spouse. So if you can write up a justification, give us the numbers, we'll review it, and how's it related to COVID? So we, we're seeing some pretty wide open, broad things, and we expect the same coming in for the, uh, the non-dairy working lands grant. There, it's five, five wide open things of you tell us what your economic harm is. It has to be related to COVID. It has to have a justifiable dollar amount, as in last year, these things cost this much, and because of COVID, now they cost this much. Document why there's a change. What's the dollar amount? Why, why is it related to COVID? So I think I, I don't feel that that's the case. I think we're being very wide open and we don't claim to know all the economic harm a business has, has suffered under COVID and tell us, tell us what it is, justify your, your math, show your math. It's like being a, a school teacher, show your math on how you got to this number and it will be considered. But the things it has to be is somehow related to COVID and it has to be documentable in some manner. Well, that, uh, thank you for that. I, I, that's different than what I had heard people's concerns being, and I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you all are doing that. So um, just to reiterate, it sounds to me like economic harm uh, can be interpreted to mean a need to change your operation in a way to adapt, yeah. um, to do something different going forward. Uh, and as long as you can show that, that uh, the need for that is COVID related and that there's a, a you know, a, a business plan that that has some um, viable numbers in it that um, yeah, would be considered. That's great. Thank well, you. And, uh, and, and we're also several months into COVID. Um, you know, we're going back to March. So if if people did figure out ways to operate, this is still past tense. Some of these expenses. I mean, if right. they March things went 
to the devil and April, you know, being entrepreneurs, they figured out something new and implemented in April and May. So we're, we're still looking backwards and paying for adaptations they've made to remain in business. So it still is um, backward looking, not forward looking. We're not accepting, I'm going to do something different out in November. It is, I did something different back in April. So it is, that is very true that it's backward looking, not forward looking. And that is some, it's, it's not a requirement of the CARES Act. It puts in a lot more audit functions if you go forward looking. And we love our farmers and entrepreneurs to death, but we don't want to put them through an audit if we don't have to. So being defensible of backward looking receipts, data, what you spent money on has less concerns in CARES Act expenditures and being forward looking in the iffy world of I might do something in the future. So we have focused all of our grant programs backward looking. Thank you, Diane. Chip, do you have a follow up or does that um, answer your question? Oh, well. <laughs> I you like may have a lot of follow-up. You may have to do a lot. I like better the first, my first understanding. Um, well, can you like, send? Can you send me? Is there a document that has those um, sort of the qualifications? Could we you, have a we have an application guide on our website. I'll send you the link. Uh, I know we have one for the dairy, but that's been out um, well over a month now. Uh, the I think we're in the midst of finalizing the application guide for the non-dairy working lands, but I'll send you the link to those. It shows you screenshots of the application, walks you through how you know what you have to consider when you're filling this out. So I'd be glad to send that to you. Thank you. Representative Conquest, it's Anson again. I just want to add that I think one area that people have done it's it's looking back, but it's actually looking forward was we've had applicants say they were a soft cheese maker and they lost their market. But what they had to do is pivot and put up a farm stand and get people to come to the farm or put up a website. We have seen that and we have funded those type of operations through the, through the, through the, uh, through the state. So I think what Diane is highlighting is there's a way to do it. I think we have a dairy farmer who has actually um, decided to process milk and, and because of some of the reductions that they faced uh, through their co-op, they decided that they wanted to do something value added on their farm. That was a direct result of COVID and the dramatic reduction in the price of milk paid to the farmer, but they were able to use some of those COVID dollars for startup money to start this processing uh, facility and get them online. So there is a way to do it. And I think a lot of these, uh, we hope, um, we also want, we're looking to the future here. We get, you know, we've got a lot of losses, a lot of expenses that our producers and the farmers have incurred, but some of them are looking uh, to the future and changing their business model. And they are able to use some of these dollars to do that. Thank, thank you. I may try to follow up with you all a little bit more about this. Thank you, Chip. Um, thank you, Secretary. Uh, we have a final question from Representative Partridge. Carolyn, uh, no, uh, Kitty, I just forgot to lower my hand. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, we will work with the policy. And if you will, you will work between us and House Ag and also with the Agency of Agriculture. I have just two clarifications. One, I want to, in House Appropriations, we're really careful of the use of the word cut because uh, cut and uh, a cut and um, realigning to a, a fund a, a fund stream are two different really two different pieces so when we i want to go back to the clean water just quickly it it if there's a reduction to the program but the reduction is due to realigning realigning to the performance of the fund is that correct yes this, yes okay. it is okay right. There so is lower revenue coming into the clean water fund, and this is the adjustment to everyone across the board, agriculture, um, A&R, uh, AOT, all have been adjusted based on revenue projections. Uh, usually when we see a cut, we have to get to a budget balance or money is needed elsewhere. And so we take money from one area and put it somewhere else. 
but this is we identified a fund stream which was a property transfer tax percentage a percentage of the sales tax in the sheets and as those come in we base a budget on an estimate but then we have to true up to that estimate unless the legislature decides uh, to add more money but it, it, that that would be a, a separate discussion you are aligning your projects to the amount of money that came in on the fund um, the funding stream that that we that we designated um, and then my other question is is there any reduction to the base of the working land and replaced with other dollars or is that base the same with general fund dollars the base remains the same at 594,000 for the granting program okay. from so general none of fund that working was, lands. Okay, no GF was taken one time and replaced with other dollars. Correct. Okay. In our in our original FY21 request, we asked for a one-time increase of 750,000, but the base for the working lands and general funds for granting was 594,000 and remained level funded. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. Um, and so, uh, Carolyn, we look forward to working with your committee. And as soon as you can get a memo to us on these areas, it, there didn't appear to be many questions after we left the water quality issue. Uh, there are some just around uh, working lands. There will be some with CRF. CRF dollars we can address separately from the budget. So if you have a position on the budget and can get us that uh, as soon as your committee is ready, we would appreciate it. And then CRF, you know, can be a whole separate memo when you send us a memo it can be very informal don't you know it can be just a simple email you don't have to cite statute you don't have to do the sections or anything like that just make it as informal um as as you know to to expedite it because we're going to know what you're talking about and um and it will save a lot of time and ledge council is out straight so thanks we kitty we will be working on this tomorrow and friday so Perfect. Oh, perfect. Uh, thank you. And we invite anyone to the public hearing. Uh, pass that on to your uh, constituents back home. If you have a way to send out messages, you may want to uh, send that out. Teresa can provide the YouTube link that they can join in on. Um, and again, Secretary Tebitz, thank you for bringing in your team. And um, we'll follow up with any questions. Did he, may I just... Kitty, uh, Dave here. Uh, I want to thank the secretary and his staff. I, I also, I also think uh, one of the secretary's members here today uh, has a birthday. I think that might be oh. Diane. Well, just wanted oh, to Diane, wish you a happy, happy birthday. birthday. Thank you very so much. Thank you. Right? thank you, thank you, Diane. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Yes, thank you. This is what I wanted for my birthday this morning. I was to talk to the House Appropriations <laughs> Committee. Yeah, I think you're a little older than I am, Diane, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> years and years. <laughs> yeah. I don't know which way that one goes. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, enjoy the... Oh, we'll see you all on the House floor. We're back on the floor. So we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Okay, Thank you back. very much.